the, the issue of net neutrality is not just an issue on subjection. Uh, I think that uh, if we discuss about neutrality from a legal perspective, we basically have to deal with two new technologies that are coming up. Uh, one technology is uh, the technology of network management. Um, so it's the internet uh, is no, no longer prevailed by the best effort principle, but it's possible to uh, privatize uh, data packages and to, to slow them down, uh, things that could not be done before. Um, the, the technique, yeah. how you can do this, is pretty um, new. Uh, you can do it uh, with the package inspection, but uh, you can also um, see the problem if you look at the standardization of um, new, um, the new generation networks. Uh, because if you look in the standardizations, you, you will find that uh, this prioritization of data packages is part of the definition of these new nets. So we don't uh, deal just with the problem of, um, of having congestion. Uh, we deal with a new technology. And uh, the second point, which is also most important, uh, is this uh, technique of uh, data uh, of the package inspection, because potentially you can uh, not even block or, um, or slow down data packages. You can look into data packages and even manipulate the content of these packages. Uh, because lawyers deal with dangers of human rights and uh, values of the society and not with markets, uh, we have a clearly different perspective than you both guys, I'm pretty sure. I couldn't be here, but I know you're on since years, and um, I always know that we are different in thinking. Um, however, uh, this is, if you like, the introduction. Uh, the introduction uh, is we have new technologies. Um, which, uh, um, which are responsible for the debate of net neutrality. And uh, there are potential dangers of these technologies, and these potential dangers are widely known and widely discussed. Um, data traffic can be blocked. Um, data traffic can be slowed down, I come to examples later, and unwanted co uh, contents uh, can also be blocked or even manipulated if you um, look at these new techniques of the package inspection. Uh, if you look at the positions of the parties, uh, how they deal with the problem, uh, you probably know how the fighting line um, goes. Uh, content providers fear that they might have to pay more. Um, uh, the cyber community defends the traditional principle of best effort and demand transparency where providers deviate from the principle and net providers, uh, the big um, companies who, uh, the old monopolists in the telecom sector like uh, German Telecom is clearly in favor of uh, uh, these new techniques because uh, they claim that they uh, do not get enough money out of uh, the whole net, whereas they are responsible for building up um, the new generation network, especially fiber nets. Uh, if you look at in the literature, you find um, specific concerns. Um, if you look um, in the economic literature, and you just heard these two speeches, um, the, the, the possibilities to differentiate and to prioritize is basically welcomed. Uh, it is seen as a natural path, a natural um, uh, thing to do in markets. Uh, if you bring more, uh, you can get a higher price. And uh, the dangers are um, seen, but they are included in the market system, uh, okay, the prerequisite always is that market functions. 
Um, if you look to the legal debate, if there is a legal debate, um, the, uh, the, the legal scholars are basically concerned about what is hard to translate, about communicative Grundversorgung. Uh, we translate it as a communicative basic service. This is something like a universal service thing. Uh, the idea is if you um, introduce quality of services, um, then it might happen that your old internet, your best effort internet, uh, falls apart. And if it falls apart and uh, the citizen do not have any possibility to use the internet like they do today, for example, that uh, they cannot use e-government uh, devices or e-banking devices, then you have this social problem uh, we discussed at the end uh, of the last session. And there, uh, there, that's a point where lawyers usually step in and argue, okay, um, we have to need uh, something like a communicative Grundversorgung, something like a universal service. Um, uh, if you, but there are others. We have politicians also in Germany that are heavily debating net neutrality issues. Um, first and foremost, our even our government um, uh, um, argued in favor of net neutrality. We have a coalition agreement um, between the two parties who are in government, or three parties, and uh, it is said that I quote: "We trust that competition will guarantee." neutral data transfer in the internet and other new media, net neutrality. However, we will watch the new developments carefully and regulate to serve net neutrality if necessary. So it's basically that they take a close look now and uh, if they believe there should be something done, they will do. Who is looking? Uh, we have a, a committee that inquires internet problems, the so-called Enquete Commission in Berlin, and uh, they heavily um, go into this uh, subject, and they had a couple of hearings, and uh, the parliamentarians and the experts in this uh, group are really well informed about uh, this issue, and we will see with what sort of proposals they are coming up. Uh, if you look at the German FCC, the Bundesnetzagentur, this federal network agency, they um, are a little bit reluctant to take a clear standpoint on this issue. However, they are more in favor of competition and argue in favor of transparency. I think um, the Vice President, uh, Mrs. He um, Hensler Unger, uh, will talk to you tomorrow and I think you can ask her in detail what the concerns of this powerful agency are. Um, before I uh, present the European regulatory approach, I will briefly look to the US debate, and that means we have to look uh, to the debate uh, in front of the FCC. The um, um, I think the dangers I described are pretty similar uh, in the US and the concerns are similar. Um, it's blockage, it's slowing down of content and so on and so forth. Um, however, there are basically a couple of cases which brought up the debate. It is, it is not so, let's say, abstract uh, than it, it is in Europe. Um, and uh, I think the, the first case and a little bit of a leading case is this case of uh, the Madison River Oops, company. How oh, is it, this right now? Um, so there is a, uh, there has been Madison River Telephone Company. The Madison River Telephone Company, they basically uh, blocked um, the possibility to use uh, voice over IP. Uh, why? Because they thought that they would ruin their own business model uh, and therefore they just uh, prevented the customer for using uh, um, services like Skype. Uh, we, we do have and uh, we could see these practices as well in Europe, uh, especially in the mobile phone sector, that uh, you were not allowed to use Skype with a mobile phone. Why? It's very easy. You can basically do your telephone calls for free if you use Skype, 
but if you use your mobile phone, you are bankrupt soon, at least if you do telephone calls to China or to the United States. Um, so there is a big economic incentive uh, to prevent the customer for using these um, um, services, and um, um, the Medicine River Telephone Company did it. They blocked this service, this voice over IP service. The whole case uh, came in front of the FCC and the FCC had its first ruling. And uh, the FCC developed four basic principles um, and these four basic principles can be seen on this slide. These are the first four and I will quote them. Uh, users shall be able to access any lawful content. Users shall be able to use any application or service. Users shall be able to connect any legal devices that do not harm the network. And users shall benefit from competition among network providers. In this uh, Medicine um, River case, um, the FCC draw uh, its decision on the first principle and just uh, prohibited this denial of voice over IP service. It never came, to my knowledge, to a formal decision, but uh, the FCC put a lot of pressure on the company and I think they just uh, stopped with their practice. Um, like it is in these common law countries, you always have cases in order to develop principles. And uh, the second uh, case uh, was the so-called um, BitTorrent case. Uh, BitTorrent is, uh, I think, a software program, and uh, uh, it, it just happened that um, uh, a couple of customers um, made uh, incredible uh, intense downloading, so they used the internet heavily. Uh, I think um, a fan of jazz mu musician uh, also tried to download it, its music, and then he found out that it was ter terribly slowed down. Uh, so he got very angry because it was not part of his contract uh, that the company was allowed to slow this down. So he went to a consumer protection agency, or not agency, consumer protection group, and was claiming uh, this is illegal, they cannot just uh, stop and slow down my, my downloading. Uh, the FCC again proved this very deeply. Uh, there was a big debate in the United States, all consumer groups uh, went nuts, uh, and uh, the cyber community as well. And uh, the result was that again, and I think the FCC also stressed the first principle that uh, the company uh, was, it was ordered that the company uh, is not allowed to slow down uh, um, this process. Um, there was also a legal debate whether this would be possible or not. It was argued that the FCC has no uh, jurisdiction at all, no power um, to do this um, um, decision. Um, and uh, I think we had a court ruling two or three months ago and the US court argued that the FCC was not right in uh, doing this decision. Um, so at the moment it's a pretty open uh, question whether the FCC will get uh, the power to, to render these decisions or not. Um, however, uh, this was, or, or this is only half of the story, uh, after President Obama came into office, uh, the FCC, the new chairman, uh, I think Gechanowski is his name, he uh, proposed a new policy in uh, network, uh, net neutrality. And uh, he argued that uh, two other principles uh, have to be recognized. And these are the principles five and six. Uh, um, um, broadband providers shall be forbidden to discriminate particular internet services and applications. And uh, the sixth principle is basically uh, the principle of transparency. Broadband providers are, proud, are bound to make their network management methods public. So they have to argue uh, when they, uh, they have to publicize when they use net management techniques in order to slow down traffic. Um, these principles, this principle of non-discrimination is uh, pretty hard to catch. 
um, the FCC even argued that there might be exemptions to this uh, principle of non-discrimination. So the principle of non-discrimination would be not a strict one. If it would be strict, then you have no exam exam exemptions. One exemption they proposed or discussed, they didn't decide on that, but they argued it could be an exemption if you have a congestion problem, then you can use network management techniques. It was argued that um, to guarantee legal and spam-free internet, that would, could be another reason um, that could justify um, uh, um, to discriminate a customer. Uh, and so on. There are uh, three or four exemptions in addition to that. But uh, the FCC didn't reach any consensus so far. And politically, um, there has been no consensus too. Um, so, in, on this debate, uh, there is, as at least what I know, uh, is no, um, how to say, no good end of the story. Uh, nobody really knows what the legal situation is precisely. Um, these six um, uh, principles are still in the, in the debate, um, as, especially principle, the fifth principle is uh, still pretty unclear what it means, whether you are using a more strict concept of non-discrimination or a more uh, sub substantial concept of discrimination. Uh, we do have this debate actually in the German legal system system too. We, um, we, we know the concept of uh, strikte Gleichbehandlung und um, Gleichbehandlung, um, was nur ein Willkürverbot bedeutet. Das heißt, wenn ich einen sachlichen Grund habe, dann uh, darf ich diskriminieren. So the, these concepts are pretty similar in both legal orders, but no decision so far. Uh, I think a very important impact of the debate on neutrality uh, has been uh, reached in the area of uh, subsidies uh, of uh, broadband nets. Um, in the US, like in Germany, um, you do have problems with uh, broadband internet, especially in rural areas. Rural areas, And uh, like in Germany, uh, the government gives money to, in order to buy, uh, to buy, to build up nets uh, and uh, um, cities and so on. They spend money for this. But if they do it, uh, they just have to do, they, they are just allowed to do it if they accept the principle of net neutrality. Yeah, it is a little bit like in Germany where the community or a municipality just is allowed to build up its own net if it accepts the principle of open access. And uh, like here and like in the US, nobody really knows what this means. But no risk, no fun. So that's uh, basically the US debate. If you look uh, to the European regulatory attempts, uh, the debate is pretty different. Uh, it's not just pretty different, it's completely different. Um, Europe is not really interested in a non-discrimination rule. We have a big debate about uh, net neutrality, but um, if you look at the European level, the European Commission, our, um, uh, if you look to Brussels, uh, you f easily find out that they are um, concerned about transparency, but not non-discrimination. And I will show it to you um, in a second. Uh, first, uh, we do have now new directives on electronic communications. Um, for the American guests, uh, a directive is something like a European law, and uh, it is basically binding, and the member states have to um, implement these directives um, um, in 2011 in, in May. And uh, in these directives, it's clearly stated what can be done in the area of net neutrality and what not. Um, first of all, net neutrality is now a regulatory aim of the European directives. Uh, however, 
there is no definition of uh, network neutrality. Uh, I couldn't even, um, <laughs> I was very surprised if I read through this rule that this rule is about net neutrality. In fact, if you read this rule, uh, you cannot figure this out. But uh, lawyers, as you know, we don't have just rules. We also have re reasonings for rules so that we can a little bit understand what politicians mean. And in these reasonings, it is said that this sentence, which nobody can understand, means that net neutrality is now an aim of European regulation. So I just rely on these reasonings. Uh, but what is very clear is uh, the, um, the concept of transparency. Um, the, uh, uh, there are information rules, if you like, um, at the beginning of, co of contract conclusion. So before you uh, write down and sign a contract, uh, you have to be informed about limitations of the access and the use of applications and services, of minimum standards of service quality, of techniques used to avoid an overload of network capacity. Uh, but these information uh, requirements are also um, valid if, uh, the, if, if there is a change that uh, uh, that comes uh, when you already signed your contract. So you, your signed contract goes and then there is a change in uh, network capacity techniques after a year, let's say, so they are again, um, um, uh, it's again necessary to inform them. So it's just um, not a process that, that is just before the contract is signed. It's a constant uh, requirement to inform the consumers. Um, that is one instrument. The second instrument is that there is a possibility for the regulator and the commission to, uh, to set up a minimum standard in service quality. This is also a very strange concept, because if you read through this, you don't know what they are talking about. Uh, so again, you look into reasonings, and after a while, you get an idea what they mean. Um, the, f first of all, it is unclear what does it mean, service quality. There is no uh, definition of service quality. Uh, and uh, if you look at the wording, one could even argue that uh, non-discrimination uh, could be an element of service quality. But uh, if you look closer um, in, the, in the law, in the directives, one sees that uh, this is not meant. It is meant these technical parameters of bandwidth, delay, fluctuation, packet losses, and so on. So it's more a technical approach. And if you look again in the reasoning, you get an idea why there is a requirement for a minimum standard in service quality. The, uh, the, the fear the Commission had was that if the companies um, using more and more capacity for quality of services, then again, the best effort internet is in danger. So they thought if you use, let's say, 70% for quality of services, then at some point there would be a danger that uh, the old internet would be dead. Whether this is technically sound or not, I don't know. I'm not a technician. This is at least what the Commission fears. And uh, so if you have, let's say, too much quality of services, then there can be a point that the Commission or the German regulator argues uh, we define a minimum um, uh, standard for specific services, let's say for best effort, and uh, so and this would be untouched. This is uh, again in the line I mentioned before what lawyers think that you need or you have to make secure that the internet as a uh, virtual room for communication uh, in a way that we have it now survives. Yeah, it is this universal concept idea basically. It is not clearly universal concept, uh, uh, service concept, uh, but I think you know what I mean and we can go into detail uh, in the discussion. Um, this is basically what is written in these directives. Trans also the aim of net neutrality, 
um, transparency rules <coughs> and uh, the possibility to lay down a minimum standard in service quality. Um, the Commission uh, already um, finished a consultation process and um, I think there were more than 300 people who sent in uh, consultation papers and uh, I think you too and uh, the result was they like the approach they chose in the directive. So no changement, no uh, non-discrimination rule, just transparency. Five minutes. Um, so uh, the, the, the question is, uh, will this work? And uh, there are a couple of colleagues who uh, criticize um, the concept of the EU Commission. First of all, they argue transaction costs are too high. Uh, there is no cancellation right to really get rid of your uh, contract if there is an infringement of net neutrality. And um, the third argument is what happens if in the market there is nobody who really is willing to, um, to, to provide for a service that is in line with net neutrality principles. If these critiques are right, then one could look at a more uh, um, strict concept of net neutrality, and that is actually my last point, and I hope I will get it through in three minutes. Uh, so the idea would be uh, um, to, to shape a, new, a net neutrality rule. Yeah? I just assume that this is necessary, it's necessary now. We can discuss this later. If, we does, if you discuss about net neutrality, I think it is most important that one gets a clear understanding of the aims. What, what is the aim of such a rule? And uh, the aim would be clearly assurance of competition. In the US debate, assurance of innovation is most important. But I think if it comes up to deep package inspection, then you have also to assure integrity and authenticity of content. Yeah? If you can manipulate the, uh, the content, then this is a problem. And uh, you have this problem of communicative Grundversorgung, communicative basis service, and transparency. How to get these um, uh, aims into practice? Uh, I developed a couple of regulatory principles. Um, you have to invent uh, something that Mr. Kneeps mentioned, and that is known in, econom in economics, but not in law. I think we have to develop a notion of freedom of transportation. So far, we just know the notion of freedom of access in telecommunications and broadcasting. Uh, but in the internet, you, ju you do have transportation problems, no longer access problems. I can discuss this uh, later if you like. Uh, then uh, you also have to um, eliminate the possibilities of manipulation or blockage of, spe of specific contact content. You do have um, you do need transparency rules. Uh, you can allow, from my point of view, a quality of service uh, um, services, but just to a limited extent. Quality of services um, are not allowed to blow up your uh, communicative Grundversorgung, your communicative basic service. So the interest of the society has to be preserved. And uh, I think you need an e efficient enforcement system. Uh, if you try to implement these um, regulatory principles, then uh, a rule for net neutrality uh, securance could be as follows, and I think because I have no time, but you can read, uh, please feel free <laughs> to read through it. Thank you very much.